So this is my 1954 Chevy Bel Air that I affectionately call Grampy because, well, let's face it, it kind of looks like an old grandpa car. Now for the backstory on this car, you can check out the video up in this link up here in the right hand corner. But the ultimate goal of this car is I want it to be a road trip car. So I want to build it so it's reliable, but it also is fun to drive. So the whole drivetrain and all of the suspension and brakes and everything is going to be updated so it'll feel like you're driving a brand new car even though it looks like you're driving a 54 Bel Air. Now this car from the factory had a pretty decent front end. In fact, it was the same front end they used on the original Corvettes from 1953, I think up until the Gen 2 Corvettes. But the passenger side shock mount on the A-arm broke and so it was dangling there. Plus it had the old drum brakes which is not good for the power plant I want to put in this thing. And the passenger side brake cylinder was leaking. And so when you hit the brakes, you went lurching into oncoming traffic. So I decided I'm going to replace the whole front end with a Mustang 2 kit. And again, if you haven't seen the comparison video, click on the link up here in the right hand corner. Because there's a whole story on how I settled on this Speedway kit with the Heights cross member, which is what I'll be installing on old Grampy here. From the factory, it has a completely boxed in frame. So I won't need to box in my frame, but if your car doesn't have a boxed frame, you'll need to weld in a plate here where the cross member is gonna go. Uh, to get this cross member off of here, it's really simple. Thank you Chevy for being hot rodder friendly. All you do is you gotta remove these bolts. Here's for the sway arm bracket and then cross member bolt right there. And then there's a couple down in here. Same thing on the other side over there. Just a few bolts you have to undo. And then undo the pitman arm for the steering, which is easy. You just undo the bolt and get a pitman arm puller thing. And that's it. And that whole front end will roll out of here. First things first, we need to jack up the car and make sure the front end is perfectly level where the new cross member and towers is going to weld to the frame. So here you can see it's exactly level. I'm not 100% convinced this garage floor is level because the passenger side was just a little bit lower than the driver's side. But all I needed to do just to get it exactly on was to put the jack under a piece of cardboard. And we'll check this several times as we do this build. To make sure the level is square and I'm not getting any kind of false reading by having it diagonal on the frame, I use these holes from the factory as sort of my marking point for the level and then just kind of eyeball it to make sure it's square on both sides with the frame, which it is. And then whenever I'm leveling something and it's critical that it has to be absolutely level, I usually use two separate levels at the same location. And as you can see, this one too is also reading dead on level. So I'm going to call that good. So before you start taking anything apart, you really want to make a ton of marks from where the original equipment is because once you take this off, it's going to be really hard to get it back to where it was from the factory. So you want to take note of where the center line of your spindles are and mark your frame. And this is where a gray Sharpie comes in handy. And you can use a square to kind of get it pretty close to square to the frame. So here's the line from the edge of that level. I use my square to come down straight. And mark that line there from the edge of the, of the level. And then the level was an inch and a quarter inch thick. So half of inch and a quarter is five eighths. So I measured five eighths from this line and I got this line with the circle around it. And that should be the center line for the axle. And according to the instructions, you're supposed to scribe a mark 16 inches from the front bumper hole. But the front bumper hole on my car is all jacked up from somebody plasma cutting or something. Just kind of guesstimating. If I measure 16 inches from this line right here, I get pretty close to where that hole is. It's the front edge of the hole. And even if I did the same thing on the other side over here, you get 16 inches to the edge of this jacked up hole right here. See that's showing from the center of the hole. Hmm. See the diagram also shows this V brace right here and it looks like the line is kind of like right at the edge of it. So almost pointing right at where this bolt is. And if you look down here, this right here is the center of where the spindle is. And that's almost right in line with where that bolt is, which is just past where my mark is. 
So I think I'm on the right track. And then if we take this level and kind of line it up with that mark over there, line up with this mark here, you can see how I'm not quite in line with that spindle down there. Spindle is a little bit farther back. So I think if I drop the level down where it's lined up with my back mark there and back mark here, you can see now the edge of it is pretty close to lined up. So I think I need to move my mark back a little bit farther. Now I'm not going to be able to use the original steering box, so I'm going to have to cut this steering shaft to get that steering box out of there. Because on this car, it's all one piece. You can't take it apart. So I made all these location marks so I can get my steering column and the shift linkage right back in the exact same place where it was before I cut this thing. So I'm just going to weld a little tab to the side of this steering column to keep it held in place. I'll probably cut it right about here. So on this Heights cross member, you might have to massage it a little bit because every frame from the factory was not exactly perfect. You also want to clean the edges down to bare metal and put a little bit of a bevel on it so you can get good penetration with your weld. Since the cross member is three and three quarters of an inch wide, the center line is going to be at one and seven eighths inches. So use your scribe to get a really fine line to be as precise as possible. Here you can see the scribe mark on my frame and we'll just line it up with the scribe mark on the cross member. And again, you want to double check your level to make absolutely sure your frame is level. And then you also want to put a level on the cross member to make absolutely sure the cross member is level. We are exactly dead on level. So we'll just tack this in place for now. All right, I've got it tacked a couple places here. As you can see, we are dead on center line on both sides. And we are exactly level. There's the top of the frame and down here, perfectly level. So I'm gonna call that good. Now the next step is to put the spring perches on. And according to the instructions, it needs to be an inch and seven eighths in front of the front edge of your cross member towards the front of the car. And since this cross member is three and three quarters of an inch wide, half of three and three quarters is an inch and seven eighths. So if I go from my center mark here forward an inch and seven eighths, then I just need to go another inch and seven eighths here or three and three quarters forward to the front of the car from my center line and scribe a line. And that's going to be where the front edge of the spring tower sits, sort of something like that. All right, I got the spring towers tacked in a couple places. They are dead on the inch and seven eighths in front of the edge of the cross member. And you can see we are dead on level. So I'm gonna call that good. One other thing that's worth noting, make sure the high side of these spring towers is pointing towards the front of the vehicle. That's your anti-dive. When you brake, a little bit of back force will compensate for the forward lean as you brake and give you sure handling as you're coming to a stop. Okay, so you can weld in those spring towers at this point, but I'm gonna leave them tacked in for right now and finish bolting on the rest of the kit just to make sure everything is gonna fit the way it's supposed to fit. And if I run into any problems, I can fix it now before I finish welding everything all together. One of the things you do need to do though with the Speedway kit and also with the Heights kit is weld in these gussets and the spacer for your lower A arm to attach to your cross member. This piece here goes inside the cross member and this will go on the back side of the cross member and that's what creates your offset. 
So your A-arm comes out this way. And the way to do that is to just bolt it all together onto your cross member and then tack it in place. You do wanna be careful though, because if you tack it too much or get too close it will melt those urethane bushings, so don't get too hot with it. Just put a couple of tacks that'll hold it in place, then you can pull the A-arm off and finish welding it up. This inner spacer, you're not gonna be able to get all the way around it, so just get as far as you possibly can. And of course, you always wanna make sure that you sand it to clean metal and put a little bevel around it as well for good penetration. I don't know whose weld is better, me or the four-year-old Chinese girl who welded that helix kit, but these pieces aren't structural, so it'll be okay. So I got this all temporarily mocked up in here. Nothing is bolted down tight. It's all just kind of hand tightened just to make sure everything's gonna bolt in place, except for these top nuts up here. I did actually tighten those. But it looks like everything's gonna work out really well. Since I know everything's gonna line up and it's all gonna fit, the next step is to tear this apart. Finish welding these top hats, finish welding the underside of the cross member, and then I'm gonna powder coat a lot of this stuff, paint the frame as far back as I can go because I don't have the body off the frame, clean it all up and make it better than brand new. All right, now listen, this is very important. If you are not a good welder or you don't have a good enough machine, do not do this on your own. Have somebody that is a good welder, has a good machine do this because this front end is holding the whole front end of your car together. If it falls off going 90 miles an hour down the freeway, it's bad news, not only for you, but the other motorists around you and whoever's in your car with you. You gotta be safe, so don't booger weld it and try to patch pieces together. Make sure you get good, solid lines and penetration all the way around. So